Hey guys, welcome back and happy Memorial Day weekend to all of you. I'm putting together a video here for choosing pace lines. Now I had a comment about a week ago in one of my videos uh, from a subscriber and I try to get back to as many comments as I can as far as responses go. But uh, just so you know, just to let you know, your, your comments are not ignored or I, I see everybody's comments. There's just times where... Um, I may not have the time to put the thought into my responses or whatever, but one of the comments was it would be nice to see a video on how I choose pace lines. Now, I've done one of these in the past, but this one is going to be a little more elaborate and detailed. And hopefully it helps you out for those of you guys that are using the progression model, uh, mainly the double pace line, a double pace line model. This video is going to focus on things that I look for to choose my first pace line, the things that I look for to choose my second pace line. Now, this whole pace line debate and argument goes back. I mean, I've seen videos of uh, Brohammer seminars, and, I mean, uh, Sartine seminars, where there were four or five panelists up there. Some of you may have seen these videos. Um, if you belong to paceandcap.com, uh, there's a thread that's dedicated to just Sart Sartin methodology, and you'll see those videos in there. And even back then, they all differed on what they looked for in their pace lines. Where one was, for example, and they were talking about single pace lines. And one would say, listen, I, I, don't, I don't go past the first three races. I try to pick the best that it's at in, the, in the last three races and go with it. If four, five or six races back was his best race, I don't go there. Where another guy would say, well, I go there. Uh, another guy was saying how he'll go as deep as a year ago to find a pace line. Some, some guys don't care about the surface. Others care about the surface. Some, some don't care about distance. Others care about distance. So what I want to do is I want to share with you what I've been doing using the pace progression model. And uh, hopefully you'll get some insight from it. And you'll be able to share your thoughts. Uh, this is going to be on Mountaineer for tonight, 526. I'm going to put my charts in the Discord. For those of you that belong to the Discord, I'm going to put them in there later. If you're not in the Discord, I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys to join. So if you want to follow along Mountaineer, just to see how these pace lines, using these pace lines, did tonight. Now, as I mentioned before, you live and die by the pace lines you choose. And you're never going to be 100% correct. The horse, your horses are not always going to run exactly the way that you mapped it out based on the pace line that you choose and based on the handicapping factors that you use. So you got to keep that in mind uh, when frustration starts to build up as far as your um, your handicapping goes. The last time I did Mountaineer was last Sunday. I found five races that I liked. I played five races. The first four I went 0 for 4. Luckily my bets were small. Small 50 cent tries. Uh, some exacted wheels, and I didn't hit until the fifth race. My, my last race hit, and at the time I was down like $68, and I hit the last race, I hit the try, I hit the exacta, I had the winner, and I ended up getting back like $230. So you're never out of it until, obviously, that last race goes off and you find out, you know, you know what, you're out of it for the night. So let's, without any further ado, let's take a look at the pace lines. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to just highlight or outline the things I look for for pace line one. And then we're going to go over to the Mountaineer card on the PP generator. And I will I will uh, identify which races I will use as the pace lines based on these factors here. So the first factor I will look for for my first pace line is, without a doubt, recency. Okay? And when I say recency... Um, I'm looking for the last three races, barring any layoff. Okay, sometimes that's hard to find. Sometimes you'll find uh, two races and then a layoff before that. So I'll look at those two races there. Okay, the second thing I'll look for is the same distance type as today. And here's the reason I say distance type. It's not always easy to find 
a six and a half furlong race if today's six and a half. Okay? If I can find a seven furlong race in the last three that fits the criteria, I'll use that. If the last six and a half furlong race was a month ago, I'm not going to use that as my, la my, my pace line number one. I may use it as my number two when I get down there. We'll discuss that. But I won't use it as my number one. So as long as this, it's a sprint that's where I can pull a distance equivalent somewhere out of there. If it's a five furlong race and today is six and a half, I'm not going to use the five furlong race as my pace line. Okay? The only time I will use something shorter is if it's a five and a half furlong race and the last three races were five furlongs, five furlongs, and let's say four and a half. And one of those five furlong races was run well. And I look back and I see that I'm going to be able to get a pace line too for today's distance. I'll use that one of those five furlong races. Okay. The third is comparable class level. If today is a 10,000 uh, 10, claiming, non-winners of two, I'm looking for a 10,000 non-winners of two. If I can't find, the, uh, find one, if there's a 12,500, close enough. Okay, but I'm looking for something that's going to meet, once I'm done bullet pointing here, I'm looking for a race that's going to meet all five of these or six of these pieces that I'm going to put on here. Okay, sometimes your race, your paceline race might only meet three, of the, three or four of them. Okay, but ideally, I'd like them to meet all of these here. The fourth one is a race with no excuses. All right, here's what I mean by that. You got three races to look at. Not, there was one that was okay. Okay, there was two with, two with excuses. Let's say, you know, uh, bad break, bumped at the start. And you see that it was that it affected the horse, or even if you're a replay guy and you watch the replays, you see for yourself. I can't use that race. I'm going to look for a race that obviously that the horse had no excuses and had every bit of a chance to, you know, run its race. And number five is look for comparable to today's pace. And here's what I look for. I look ahead of time before I handicap the race. I'm going to look. Let me go to the PPs real quick. I'm going to look and see how many E's are in the race. E5. There's a P2. So there's one E. There's another E5. There's another E5. Okay. So there's three out of six horses. There's three that are going to that run best on the lead. That are probably going to want to go get the lead. And you could back that up by just looking at the running lines here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that today's race, the first call and the second call are going to be in the pluses here. Okay, for those that use Brisnet, this, may, this meant fast early pace. So if I can pull a pace line that has pluses, instead of going after one that, if I can find one here, like, let's say, for example, we had a minus 8 and a minus 12 up here. That there doesn't really represent what we think is going to be today's pace. This slow. Okay? Four lengths. Uh, Brisnet uses one point for every two lengths. So we're looking at uh, four lengths here. Slow at the first call. And six lengths slow at the second call. So two points for every length. So I would look for something in the pluses. Now, um, I wouldn't split it. I wouldn't try to split hairs and, and say, okay, well, plus seven, plus seven is better than... I would just look for something in the pluses um, in, that, uh, in that frame of mind when I'm looking at comparable pace. If you're going to use that as one of your pieces to uh, use for... Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Okay, so those are the five things I'm looking for for pace line number one, okay? If I can find a race that has all five, that's great, okay? You might have a race that you, you're, you're projecting a fast pace, fast early pace, and there's a, you're looking at a horse, and the last three races, the horse has come out of slower races. Races with minuses. Well, what I would do is I would look for the, 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 the one 
that would be closest to, to zero when you added them up. Okay? The fastest of the slow those slow races, I would look for the fastest one. Okay, so if I had these three to look at, plus one, zero, zero minus one, zero plus one, it would probably be either this race here with the 81 or this place race here with the 82, okay? Because of the today's projected pace. All right, so that's pace line number one. Pace line number two, this is where we reach back, okay? And I will reach back as far as three, three form cycles here. So let me put that down. And when you get when you get horses a well, race with a lot of lightly raced horses, you're not going to find three form cycles. You may not, or if you just get a lightly raced horse, I'm not shouldn't say a race with, but if you get a lightly raced horse, but what would I consider uh, three form cycles? I would say this is form cycle number one. This is probably maybe every every three races could be a form cycle. Okay, there's no layoffs to deal with here. And then this, I may reach all the way back to the bottom of this page to find this second pace line. Now, you may look at that and say, oh, I don't agree with that. You're going way back here. You're going back to coming up to a year now, July 23rd. Well, there's a reason why head scratchers win races, okay? You look at a race and you might see a good, a decent race run here. Clunkers all the way through here, and then all of a sudden you find a good one back here, and you you average out them too. The decent race and this race back here might be enough to put this horse near the top for you. Where somebody else might go, oh, I'm not going all the way back there. I'm not looking at that. When you're not going to be right 100 percent of the time, why not just the game's a gamble anyway? Why not just gamble and pull that pace line? And use it and not worry that you're going back a year okay especially when you look at certain ages of horses okay if it was a three-year-old year and the horse is a four-year-old um you know what hats off the, the horse is probably a better horse at four if you could pull a pace line when he's three years old and it puts this horse toward the top of your selections and he's going off at a nice price that might be the horse that makes money for you so i will go as far back as three form cycles, okay? Now, when you're dealing with layoffs, sometimes form cycles are a little more recent, okay? When there's no layoffs, you may, you know, you can go back as far as a year sometimes, okay? So let's look here down real quick, and I'm not gonna, here's a layoff, so I might look at that as form cycle number one, okay, form cycle number two. Maybe I'd split these two, this, this little, area here into two different form cycles right there so i might go as far back as this layoff of november 20 2023 to find my second pace line out of here okay the second thing i'm looking for is again today's distance and i'm not going to put distance type because the reason i put distance type here is when you're looking at pace for pace line number one I'm kind of handcuffed and strapped in the, for the last three. If I look at, if I'm looking back as far as three form cycles, I should be able to find a race at today's distance. Then if I can't, then I go back to the distance type. All right, but if today's five and a half furlongs, I want to use something that's five and a half furlongs that meets the other criteria. Um, sometimes you have to make a decision, okay? Today might be a fast pace. I only have one five and a half furlong race and it's projecting a very slow pace, especially second call. But yet if I go back to the six furlong race, which isn't today's distance, but it's the same distance type and it matches more of what today's pace may look like, you have to make a decision as the handicapper to determine which are the two that you use. Me personally, I would go with the six furlongs race, especially if it's better speed figure, which it is, a 79 over 76, I would go with that one, okay? 
But again, you do as you know. You do as you do. It's it's up to you. It's your choice. Let's look at the third factor. Again, comparable class level. And this might be the one that finds you the long shot. I'm going to give a hypothetical here. Ignore this here. Let's find a horse that's running lines. I haven't been that appealing. If I can find one. If I can't, I'll just use a hypothetical. Here, here's my hypothetical. Let's look at one more. Here's my hypothetical, okay? I use, for example, I use a pace line up here for my first pace line, okay? Which is a dropping class. Let's say this horse broke its maiden way down here. And ever since then, it's been running allowance races all the way through until today. Today is a claiming race. And I pull my first pace line from up here because I have no choice. I pull it from a class, a class that's a little bit higher than today's or maybe a lot higher. But now I have a choice to go pace line number two to go back and find something that's comparable to this class level. That may be his maiden break in race. And I may have to use that. So this race here, for example, and again, I don't know if I'd go over this far back, but I'm just using a hypothetical. Let's say this was his maiden race. Everything else was just a, a higher class than today. And there was nothing appealing for me to use except for this maiden race. I may take the chance and use that race as my second pace line to draw from, to draw my information from. Okay, the next thing is, oh, come on, work for me here. I want to match, uh, come on, there we go. I want to match running style. This is another one of those things that if he's an E, runner such as this horse you might be strapped where your last three races he may not have had the lead he might have been in a stalking position but he runs his best races when he's on the lead i want to find a race if i can where he's on the lead in the first couple calls to use as my second pace line okay if i have a race for example that i could use in the first most recent that reflects his running style, then I will use that as my first pace line, too. I did not put that in there. I should have, but I'll add that right there. Reflects horses running style. All right, so same thing down here. I want to match the running style. Also, com again, comparable pace. If you um, see that today's race may be a little faster, I want to pull something from a race that's a little bit faster. With the points being in the plus side, if, if possible, then the minus side. Now, again, you're not always going to find a race that has... You know, that meets all this criteria and all of this criteria. But you want to try to find as many of these qualities as you can. Simple as that. And then finally, if you are using the matrix system along with pace progression, comma, then draw your pace line from your ability race. Now, you don't have to, okay? Maybe your ability race was a race that was a minus, minus 5 and a minus 10 as far as pace goes, but yet figured in the matrix categories as being his best pass race, but you don't want to use that as your pace line, okay? Don't make that there your number one concern, okay? But you could use it as one of the qualifications. You could maybe start with that and say, okay, let's look at the ability race 
And now let's see. Is it comparable pace? Check. Yes. Does it match his running style? Yes. Comparable class level? Yes. And so on. And maybe you decide to use that as your pace line. Okay, so those are the qualities I look for for pace line one, pace line two, when I'm using double pace line model. Okay, if I'm using a single pace line model, I'm pressed for time, I'll just look for these here, obviously. Now let's take a look here at race number four. I already, I already finished races one, two, and three at Mountaineer using those qualities that I look for. Let's take a look real quick at Mountaineer 4 before I send off here. Okay, Mountaineer 4, the two horse is scratched. And I do have the 4 here on the pace progression model. And I mentioned before, I cannot make the script any larger. So hopefully you guys have a clear view of this. Now we're looking at a five and a half furlong race, okay? So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the three most three most recent races barring any layoffs so we have a layoff here i got two races to choose from matches his running style even though it's five furlongs but i'm handcuffed i'm going to use that as my pace line number one so i'll go 22 and four that's a 96 46 and two which is an 88 We have a 92 as a turn. And again, I showed this in my last video. When you're doing sprints and you're using the 22 and the 44, all you got to do is take your ratings, find the difference, which is a difference of 8. Subtract 8 from 100. You have a 92 rating on the, on, on the turn. I'm not going to go deep into that. That was another video I did maybe three videos ago. Uh, the pace lines, anything five furlongs or less, it's not going to give you the... Uh, pace for 1C or the E1 pace so we'll go to E2 92 final fraction for 5 furlongs we use um, 11 as our standard for 100 here we have a 12 and 4 which is a 91 and the late pace in this race was an 85 that would go here so today's model that I'm using, I'm not using, even though it's on this grid, I am not going to use the matrix system factors. I'm not figuring target ability here. So we're just going to black that section out. And I'll do it just a couple more here before we move on. I'll just do the second pace line. Let's go back and look for now. I want to go five and a half. I'm not handcuffed anymore. I'm not going to use a five furlong race, even if it's his best race. I'm going to look for something five and a half or six furlongs. Now five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. They all reflect his running style. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the one that reflects today's pace the best, which is going to be Three E's out of six horses running. I'm going to go with the pl plus three, plus five pace line. That's still showing his running style. Near the lead, on the lead at the second call. And I'll pull my numbers from there. So we have a 22 and one. Which is a 99. We have a 45 and two off of 44. That's a 93. That's a six point difference. Six from 100 is a 94 for the turn. And with the five and a half furlong, I'm able to pull both the E1 and E2. So we got a 93 and a 99. And then finally, final fractions for five and a half furlongs. That additional furlong added to that 11, I used 17 five and a half furlongs. So we got. From the half to the finish, we have a 14 and 3 to a minute, 18 and 7. That's a 19 and 2 off of 17. That's an 88. So we have an 88 final fraction. And once again, if you're watching this for the first time and you're saying, where in the world is he getting these ratings from and his calculations? 
I do have a link in the description for if you want to download the pace progression model. And it has videos in there that's going to walk you through converting the times into ratings and so on. And then finally, the 78 was the late pace rating from Brisnet. And I'm going to stop there, okay? So we have horse number one is complete using the qualities that I highlighted or outlined in the model or in this sheet for choosing pace lines. All right. If you have any questions, comments you want to share, do it in the comments. Do it in the Discord. Join the Discord if you, if you haven't done so yet. I'm going to finish this card at Mountaineer. I'm going to put not only the grids in there, but I'm going to put my selections in there for the entire card. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.